Well, good evening, everybody. A very warm welcome to this Christmas Rooted. Uh, it's great to see that some people have their Christmas jumpers on. Uh, it's uh, the time to get festive and to have a little bit of fun. Uh, this evening, we have got all Christmas carols uh, for our sung worship. Uh, so thank you to Martin and the guys who put that together uh, for us for this uh, rooted in Christmas evening for us. It's great to have uh, Andy Radford here talking to us. Andy is team vicar in the Halewood and Hunts Cross team, uh, and he's going to speak to us a little bit later on. Um, people will still be arriving for the next few minutes. That's fine. Um, it'd be great to have them join. So for those who've not been to Rooted or maybe not been for a while, uh, the format is that we'll have a period of sung worship. Uh, the words will all appear as if by magic uh, on your screen. Uh, all the words are there. If during the sung worship you would rather shut your cameras off so that people can't see you singing along and raising your hands, that's absolutely fine. Uh, some people are happy to do that. We will keep your mics muted uh, during the singing as well. Uh, so don't worry about singing at the top of your voices. That's actively encouraged uh, as we go on. Uh, after we've had uh, our period of song worship, Andy will then speak to us. Uh, and then after that, we'll go into some prayer breakout rooms. But I'll explain a little bit about how they were uh, later on when Andy's uh, spoken to us. So to begin with this evening, let's just take a moment. Let's just get ourselves into that attitude of worship and recognize that God's spirit is here with us, even though we're not gathered together physically, we are gathered together here virtually. So we will just take a moment to quiet. And we will move into a time of sung worship. Hopefully this will appear on your screens. Thank you. 
Silently the wondrous gift is given, so God imparts to human hearts the blessings of his hand. No, we may hear his coming, but in this world of sin, Meek souls will receive him still, the dear Christ enters in. O holy child of Bethlehem, descend to us, we pray. Cast out our sin and enter in. Angels, the great glad tidings tell. Oh, come to us, abide with us, our Lord Oh, come, let us adore. 
Oh, holy night, the stars are brightly shining. It is the night of the dear Savior's birth.
going to hand over to Andy, uh, who's going to speak to us this evening. Andy, over to you. Great. Thanks very much. Um, let's, let's pray before we get going, shall we? So, Lord, we thank you for Rooted. We thank you for the space that we have to worship you. Space to be alone with, with you. Lord God, we thank you that your Holy Spirit's here with us. And Lord, you're working. God, you're coming to each one of us at this time. And I thank you, Lord God, for your grace. You're pouring out upon us. And may your light shine, even tonight, into our hearts. Lord God, may you speak and encourage each one of us. Touch our lives. Feed us, Lord. We want to meet with you. Lord, change our lives like never before. And help us to encounter the living, risen Lord Jesus, we pray. Come by your spirit now. Lord, come, come meet with us, even as we've met with you in worship. Meet with us through your word, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, it's it's great to be able to um, join with you today. Love coming to Rooted in, in many ways. I feel like it's an answer to prayer. Such a wonderful thing that as across the churches, we can join together um, with a bit of worship that perhaps um, I'm more familiar with and I'm sure you enjoy too. And um, the theme we've got is being rooted in Christmas. I love the, the themes we've had so far uh, in being rooted in prayer, the Bible, the church and fellowship, all those different things are so important. And it reminds me very much, and I guess you had this in mind when you thought of the, the title, Paul's Prayer, that we might be rooted and established and uh, in a sense that sense of rooted means grounded or going deep and it's a wonderful sense that we can go deep can't we in the Lord and uh, as we root ourselves in those things those disciplines it obviously provides stability and a foundation for growth so how does rooted um, in Christmas help me? Why would a, a Christian festival that we all enjoy actually help uh, me today? Well, I'm going to just share a um, quick pictures with you, uh, not because it's really anything too um, marvellous, but I just thought if you get bored, you can look at the pictures. Um, so today we're thinking about um, basically the first idea of why uh, Chris being rooted in Christmas is because, as we know, it's a celebration. Yeah, hey, let's all cheer. Um, I don't know <laughs> if you are looking forward to Christmas or not. Um, it, it doesn't matter. I, I feel that what God's laid on my heart for, for us tonight, I think it's going to speak to us to all, wh wherever we might feel we're at. And I don't know if you have a favourite Christmas memory or experience. You might want to share that when we break out in groups. Uh, you know, it's it's an amazing time of the year. And um, I'm drawn back so often when I ever listen to um, Perry Como uh, singing God Rest You Je Merry Gentlemen, I am almost emotionally, psychologically, and almost physically transported back to a, as a child, sat opening my presence, listening to this beautiful record, um, just drenching in this wonderful, experience and it's such a special time of the year can't it be for can't it be for all of us um perhaps a time that remembers we remember particularly as our childhood maybe when we felt felt particularly loved we felt secure um and much about what we like at this time of the year i've got a few suggestions of what really we can celebrate yeah um looking forward to that um Bit of turkey. My father-in-law father -in does a particularly good um, stuffing ball. Um, fantastic. We have it ordered every Christmas. Um, so that's something to look forward to. Obviously, there's the films, which are obligatory now. It's almost like you have a film every week that you have to watch, get yourself in the frame of mind. Um, and then obviously the Christmas songs. Um, um, I must admit, though, sometimes it gets a bit much when you walk into the uh, shop and then uh, Mariah Carey comes on for a millionth time and you kind of slightly grow in, <laughs> grown inwardly. Um, but nevertheless, um, it's one of those moments perhaps in the, the calendar where there's a tremendous sense of community cohesion. Everybody comes together. 
I think I'm not exaggerating when I feel that perhaps it's more so in Liverpool. I think there's a general sense of community more than you would have perhaps when we were in London. I don't think that's too surprising. London isn't that cohesive, but in Liverpool, we found that people just want to do something to help somebody anywhere. And they're overwhelmed by the generosity of people. And uh, that's great. And particularly those in church as well. Um, so we have, a, though, a special reason to celebrate. And I've just finished reading a book again um, by Pete Gray called Dirty Glory. And he talks about the importance of joy and celebration. And what is surprising is he quotes a guy called John Piper. Some of you might have been familiar with him. And he says, well, John Piper's from a sort of tradition of the church, not known for their ecstatic joy. Um, but he says this, he says, the glory and grace of Jesus is that he is always and in, will be instructably, indestructibly happy. Indestructibly happy. I say it is his glory because gloom is not glorious. And I say it because his grace because the best thing he has to give us is his joy. Jesus is the happiest being in the universe. And so it's almost like an outworking of our discipleship. Um, and that is a sense of the importance to celebrate. And uh, it's almost enforced happiness, I, I suppose. And it's nice to see that um, different ones of you have got Christmas trees in the background. That's great to see. Um, but we need to create happy moments and memories for ourselves and others. And that's an important aspect of um, the Christmas celebration. Being rooted in Christmas is a celebration. But it's more than that, isn't it? It's also about the, the message. I love this slide. I came across it while doing a little search. The message of Jesus Christ has power to awaken, transform and bring life like nothing else in this world. And um, I don't know if, you know, we talked about watching films. Uh, my favourite Christmas film is uh, Scrooge. It's, I just love adaptations of um, Dickens' Christmas Carol. And Scrooge is one done in the 80s with Bill Murray. And uh, I just love it. It just moves me every time um, I watch it. Because at the end, obviously, there's a redemption that happens. And Bill Murray's character is transformed and he gives this passionate, emotionally charged speech. And it's, it's just powerful. It seems more than just acting, in fact. But anyway, the Christmas story impacts our culture like nothing else. More than many, uh, more than many are aware of the themes of um, sacrificial love, service, humility and redemption. And in fact, there's a guy called Tom Holland, not the one that played Batman. Um, I don't know him, but he's an Oxford academic and, and author. And he was particularly keen on studying ancient civilization, the Greek and Roman civilization. He had a passion for it. But what he recognized was that he cannot connect with that culture. It was something so alien and, and brutal and awful um, that he couldn't connect it. And as he studied further, um, this variance of his culture with what he was reading about, he realized that although he was an atheist, he was a cultural Christian. And I thought that was a quite a humble thing to um, admit. And you can watch some of his videos on YouTube. He did with Premier Christian Radio, but fascinating stuff because he recognized the values that he imbibed in his, through his mother's milk were the teachings of Jesus. And so by being rooted in Christmas, it's about second chances, about redemption. And um, we're not surprised when social research, uh, scientific research, backs up the truth of the Gospels. And it's been shown that various things in our life can develop um, a healthy emotional well-being. Those um, um, values and characteristics of thankfulness, being grateful for what we have, expressing gratitude to others, but also generosity. People that give are happier. It just is a fact. It's been proved scientifically. And also um, for those who are able to forgive, they're shown to um, demonstrate um, um, an emotional well-being. And no surprise, Jesus said it 2,000 years ago, 
And the Christmas story, the message of Christmas is a powerful one. And it's great that so many of us and others can give to food banks um, and just engage with the Christmas message. And uh, one of the things I've done recently is just go carol singing in the pubs. It's about the only time that I know you can go worship in a pub with a few other drunk people. They love it. Um, but it's like just as we worship God, you can engage with people in perhaps a way we wouldn't be able to normally. And so we bring we bring that joy through this message to our world, joy to the world. And we find it in generosity and thankfulness, but also just sharing our faith. So don't be ashamed of this message because it brings joy, hope and peace to people. And so we find that being rooted in Christmas, yes, it's about the celebration, of course. It's about the message, but it's much more than that. And for much of my life, I, I think um, Christmas was about enjoying the festivities. And I was brought up in a Christian home, went to church. I enjoyed the family um, at this time of year, the food, the presents, the church services um, had a great structure to them that emphasized the, the joy of the time of year. But also later on, what a great opportunity to talk about Jesus at Christmas. And um, as a child, you have this immense excitement, don't you? It's, it's something perhaps it's just off the scale excitement where you can't sleep at night because you're so looking forward to it. Um, but there's this immense low afterwards. And I remember I could never bring myself to sing a Christmas carol um, after Christmas morning. It just felt so wrong. And um, a few weeks ago, um, I was on a Zoom worship service with New Wine and, and the speaker there was saying how that we are like at this time of year that our culture is like comfort seeking missiles like a, compared to a heat seeking missile that targets hot spots so we are honing in on all sorts of kind of comfort for our lives we seek out comfort in these times more so this year and uh, particularly this year because it started so early isn't it um we need that comfort to it's a, it's like a medicine to our our woes and comfort to our sorrows and so we're seeking out and um, and there was a moment when in my christian my experience um a few years ago when i was single and it like for perhaps other single people maybe more than ever felt isolated at this time and so the heightened joy of others seems to heighten your own um isolation and individuality um but i remember at the same time going into schools and doing a magic trick and it was quite a good magic trick because you just got this empty box and you pulled things out and it was going wow the kids loved it and of course the, the there was all sorts of things that meant so much at christmas but ultimately the greatest prize was jesus and um it was a good message i say that myself um it seemed to connect really well with the kids but when i did it in church even in a, a family service it just seemed to be lame and as i picked out jesus out of the box it just seemed to kind of to me feel a bit flat it lacked i suppose a sense of strong conviction and i suppose i was going through a process of thinking what is Christmas all about for me maybe like others I found a single day or this period not enough to wear the bait uh, bear the weight of expectation and we you know all know that song I wish it could be Christmas every day I don't know if we do but you know that experience of Christmas I wish we could have it every moment and it's about this time of year that we hear this you know that um oh it just doesn't feel like Christmas does it this year I don't know if you ever hear people say that I used to hear it all the time it just doesn't feel like Christmas uh, as though we're awaiting some kind of magical um, emotion to come you know upon us as though uh, out of nowhere and also um, I remember so often when I was in work in London in the bank people used to say oh I hope um, this year we just had is not as um, I hope next year is better than this year it's it's been awful and we can clearly say that for 21 can't we and so Christmas I guess the react the dream is um, better than the reality and and that's not to put a damper on you know the celebrations and the message and all the joy that we can have but it's a crisis for me that led to a deeper revelation of Christmas joy you know other things are important but they keep us sometimes from getting to the core 
of Christmas, a simple prayer that I prayed was this, that Christmas. Lord, more than anything, the greatest gift I want this Christmas is a revelation of who Jesus is. I need something more than I have at the moment to get me through. And so we need that revelation of Jesus. And I suppose that brings us to the last point. Christ is enough for me. Everything I need is in you. And I think this is a message for all of us, wherever we're at, because um, I guess if you're clergy, like some of us are, you're stressed out because of all the preparation. Um, if you're um, maybe uh, somebody that's good at organizing, you're in charge of the Christmas um, decorations and organization, that's stressful as well. Um, you might feel that you're alone and that actually, I'm not sure what there is for Christmas in me, but ultimately as we sang, it's about God, Emmanuel, God is with us. And I love the prayer at the moment as we go through Advent in morning prayer. And I love it. It says, reveal among us the light of your presence. Why? That we might behold your power and glory. Oh, for a tiny glimpse of your power and your glory. The light in the darkness. That light, that beautiful, radiant light. As we sing so often, that radiant beam shining from your face, that picture of God's favor upon our lives, light in a darkness. We often get the candles out more than ever before because it speaks so powerfully in a, in a small way of that powerful light, bringing hope into despair, joy through difficult difficulty. And so when we, um, you know, when I used to sing carols, I used to never engage often with the words very much at all. I used to love Silent Night, Holy Night. Um, but as you go on, and just as we have done, the words become deeper, don't they? They're, they're, they're so powerful in their worship. I love the Advent hymn, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. And it says in one verse, O come, day spring, disperse the gloomy clouds of night and death's dark shadows put to flight. What a wonderful thing. What a wonderful thing that Jesus comes into our world. Jesus comes into our world, the light of the world. So being rooted in Christmas starts with the joy of a deeper revelation of who Jesus is and his love for me. What a prayer to pray this, this year. And I guess that's a prayer that echoes in your heart. You've come here tonight. You're here because you want to know more of Jesus. And what a say if I wake up on Christmas morning, all right, and I go and we sing, oh, come all you faithful, like we just sang. And we say, yes, Lord. We greet thee, born this happy morning, and we're just filled with a joy because we've had that deeper revelation of who Jesus really is to us. The wonderful, just if Jesus would just give us a drop of his revelation of who he is, his light and his glory, reveal to us the light of your presence that we might know or see your glory and your, your power. So it's about light in my darkness, joy in despair, hope and despair and peace in the face of trouble. So we can celebrate Christmas, whatever we face. I love Isaiah 45, it's a word that struck me years ago when he says, I will show you the treasure in the darkness. And then whatever your darkness might be, it can be loneliness, it can be your health, it can be finance or bereavement. It might be just a sense, I don't know, of midlife crisis, whatever you're facing. There's darkness, perhaps, when each of our hearts will be battled with. Excuse me. And just the other day, I was praying to God. I said, God, I'm missing this in my life. I won't tell you what it is, but I was just missing something. And as I was praying to the Lord, just going along the car, just suddenly I felt God's peace just bring comfort to my heart. And it's almost like we're saying this prayer. Christ is enough for me. Everything I need is in you. Everything I need is in you. And I've had friends, um, sadly, lovely men and women of God that have died far too early. A friend of mine called Andrew, um, who was facing terminal cancer, a Baptist minister down in Plymouth. And he talked, he was on the local news, and he said they talked about the joy in face of what he was, he was facing. He says, of course, we're not happy. We don't want to leave my family, but he was only in his early 50s. And he said, I feel I know the joy. We all know the joy of God in this circumstance because I love the imagery of light, because in the darkest time of the year, we celebrate Jesus coming into the dark world. 
And so whenever we pray, and often I pray for in ministry when we invite people forward to pray, and I haven't done it so much recently, um, but in when I was in my church in London, we used to pray for people as they came forward and just pray for that light to come, the light of Christ to descend on them. And often it would just um, cause a, a physical reaction in them. And so we can pray for the light of come, the light of Christ to come to our lives. And so today, maybe that word for us is today, delight yourself in the Lord. Delight yourself in the Lord. And he will give you the desires of your heart. The day spring that comes, that bursts onto our lives and banishes the darkness, disperse the gloomy clouds of night. So Jesus is wanting to meet with us today tonight and almost like that somebody sent me a picture of jesus knocking on the door of our lives we, we're familiar with it we know it and so we have the privilege of just asking him to come in and fill us with his spirit that jesus christ is enough for me everything i need is in you and once we get that i think everything else flows from it so if Christmas is going to be different this year, it's not going to be the same. Things have been taken from us that we're not going to enjoy. And so there's a sense of bereavement from that. There's a loss. And we're not going to miss family. We're going to miss parties. We're going to miss the fun that was going to be there. Um, and that's sad. It is sad. And I don't think that's what God wants. But ultimately, there's a tremendous consolation in the presence of Jesus. And we can invite him to come with us. Let's pray. So Jesus, I thank you you're here with us tonight. Thank you for your love. I thank you that you meet us at our greatest need, whatever it might be, the darkness within our hearts, whether it's fear or doubt or even depression. Jesus, we invite you, the light of Christ, the day spring, to disperse the gloomy clouds of night, burst forth upon our souls with the light of your Holy Spirit, bring us joy, bring us peace, bring us light, bring us hope, bring us your love. And we thank you, Jesus, that hope does not disappoint us because you've poured out your love into our hearts through the Holy Spirit you've given us. So Jesus, in this moment, and let's just wait here by the Holy Spirit. Now let's just ask him to come in our, in our homes. Holy Spirit, come. Jesus Christ, come to us. Wonderful Saviour. Jesus, we receive your joy. Receive your light. Come, Holy Spirit, more of you. More of you, Lord. Let the Lord whisper into your heart, your mind, those words of life and encouragement. Of you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Stop share. Andy, thank you. We're going to continue in that um, space of, of quiet, of prayer. We're going to move into breakout rooms. Uh, how they'll work is in a moment on your screen, uh, you will receive an invite to join a breakout room. Uh, if you don't want to join the breakout room, that's absolutely fine. Just decline uh, the invite to go into it. Um, if you don't go into the breakout room and stay in the main space, there will be some very quiet music playing in the background. And if you don't want to hear that, then please just mute your laptops uh, and pray in silence. Uh, but then there should be an option for everyone. So there will be a breakout rooms for you to go and pray with others There'll be a space for some quiet music and reflection, or if you want to mute your laptops, you can have a time of silence uh, as well. So we're going to do that for about 15 minutes or so. Uh, when you go into your breakout rooms, if you join them, uh, there is a breakout room facilitator. They know who they are, uh, and they're just there to help us uh, as we pray uh, on those things that Andy has shared with us this evening. So you should, in a second, receive an invitation on your screens to go into breakout rooms. And we'll see you back here shortly. <laughs> 